an unusual story is being played out in the forests at the foot of the Carpathian Mountains, not unlike a fairy tale. These two cubs are orphans. They've lost their mother and, according to the rules of the wild, every chance of survival. The two struggled on their own to find something to eat and were beginning to starve. However, the siblings had a stroke of luck. They were found and their new surrogate mother now makes every effort for their comfort. But can that work out? Wild brown bears as pets and the forest as a playground? Carpathians stretch out in a wide arc, from Romania to the Czech Republic. With enormous forests and wildlife that is already extinct in many other places. 6,000 brown bears live here. That's 50% of all the bears that exist in Europe. Their main diet is plants. It's only when they have to build up reserves for the winter that they need a little more than greens. It is then that sheep or goats will be on the menu. The shepherds on the mountain pastures are prepared. They have guard dogs and fence in their flocks. The bears know that where dogs bark, humans are never far away. And from humans, they prefer to keep their distance. As for the herdsmen, they take it all in their stride. They don't consider the bears beasts or monsters. They consider them as natural to the Carpathians as are cold spells or thunderstorms. They too are a danger to the sheep. Bears hunt for food mostly at night and will sometimes make the longer journey into a city in their search. Their sense of smell comes into its own as night falls, separating waste, bear style, edible and non-edible. This makes many of the citizens uneasy, understandably, the animals are captured and returned to the wild. There, there's space in abundance. A bear needs a territory of around 50 square kilometers when there's a sufficient food supply. A female bear produces offspring normally every three years. Her litter numbers mostly two or three. However, many don't survive the first year. They can become ill or injure themselves severely. They can starve or be attacked by other males. Sometimes the mother dies, which is a death sentence for the babies. It was an enormous stroke of luck that these two orphans were actually found. Brother and sister. At this age, they're the same size as sleepy as one another and absolutely helpless. They're around four weeks old. Václav Chalupek is very contented in his new role as mother. It's a good feeling to have given these two little fellows another chance of life. It's not the first time that he's raised a bear, but he wants to take the opportunity to study these fabled but poorly understood animals, to understand them a little better. Are they really so intelligent? And is it true that they develop their own personal characteristics in a similar way as humans do? Every two hours, they receive goat's milk with honey. 
Václav is happy that his two little bears are displaying such a healthy appetite. He already has an inkling that the two will find a place in his heart. Even Honza, the dog, has noticed the new additions to the family, although he's still not quite sure what to make of them. He is, after all, the male of the house. Me. After Václav, of course. Four weeks later, the young bears have learned to walk, almost overnight, and are now eager to try out their new mobility. There is nothing from which something new can't be learned. The hardness of materials, or the effects of gravity. As with young children, young cubs are filled with curiosity. They are almost bursting with playfulness and a fascination for exploration. As such, they are constantly learning. They adapt to their surroundings, regardless that it is not a wild forest, but instead, Václav's living room. Time and again, they will wrestle with each other. It is a passion whereby all else is forgotten. For them, they are only concerned with the fun of it all. As such, the siblings don't notice for one minute their intense fitness training. Today is going to be their first outing. This is one large step for the little bears. A little bit of courage is required, as well as a little balance. What's the... Václav wants to show them as much nature as he can. He understands it is vital for the bears. Their senses are attuned to these surroundings. Without further ado, they begin their sensory exploration with their muzzle, their nose and their paws. It is all one big adventure. And there is even a new role for their new mother, Václav. He has to set an example and lead the way. Even now it becomes apparent that the brother is a bit of a daredevil and a bit of a rowdy. While at the same time, his sister is initially a little more cautious and weighs up her options before trying something new. Both are temperamental, but she is the more intellectual of the two, so to speak. Somehow her white collar is rather fitting. Then things become more serious. Václav has to lay down the law. There are some things that cannot be allowed. Cubs already have very sharp teeth, and when suddenly the impetuous youngster bites his hand, he gets a stern warning. The little roughneck has now understood that Václav doesn't have a thick bear skin. And so, on they go. It's the end of April. Nature is spilling out of its sleep. The sound of humming is everywhere. All is fluttering and flying. New smells, new colors. The bears are in a state of sensual intoxication. They now weigh a very stately 15 kilos, but are still children. They are not alone in experiencing spring for the first time in the forest. The baby badgers are shy and scurry back into their burrow. The young wild boar seems to display a bit more self-confidence. And when all these youngsters meet, will it be the young bears that begin the hunting? 
And will that love be able to contain them? The young boar is making his tour of discovery alone. An encounter with the young bears is inevitable. <laughs> However, otherwise as perhaps it imagined, the young boar seems completely unperturbed. The bears, on the other hand, are a little more reticent and retreat to a safer distance. Do they sense that a protective wild sour is possibly hovering in the background? Whatever their reasons, Václav will examine the wild boar phenomenon more closely at a later date. For now, he has to be careful not to lose sight of the two cubs. Sometimes they're doing acrobatics up in the branches, at other times they turn up from the undergrowth. And sometimes they turn head over heels between the two. Down the tree and into the nettles, and all that even with their sensitive muzzles. Their well-deserved provisions equal 1.5 litres for each, and that six times a day. The young male cub can't get enough of the stuff. He'll grow faster than her, and throughout the course of his life will be heavier and stronger. Václav knows that his adopted children will need care and affection and that, of course, as Mother Bear and her offspring always do. The muzzling ritual produces trust and a feeling of security. Totally carefree, they win over the world of the humans and make some very mysterious discoveries along the way. Things that are nearby are sometimes a little further away. Their eventual return to the wild will be increasingly difficult. They seem to be totally at home with modern technical devices. It's all very well that this playground is built for the usage of others, but things here, well, they're just so much fun for a bear. She has just realized that the ladder will take her up and the slide will take her down. And just one more time, but this time with a little more oomph. He, on the other hand, being the macho he is, doesn't need the ladder at all. Out of the way! It is almost as if she has something to say to him. Whatever, he follows her up the rungs. A last little dispute, and down they go. Václav's house seems smaller and smaller. There are just too many wanting to share. A small bear house in the garden might not be such a bad idea well padded for the night, goes without saying. It doesn't need any windows, though. Bears feel more secure in the dark. 
Václav knows that it won't be easy for the siblings to take their first step towards being independent. He gives them another large drink from the bottle and hopes that the two are now so full that they can fall into a deep sleep. Off into the hay. Their new quarters seems to suit them quite well and a hidden bedtime treat does the trick. That's love now leaves them alone. He has reinforced the wooden wall and checked the lock. Now they're prepared for the night. The first night without Václav. But there are strange sounds. And curious sounds find their way into the bear's abode. Waking the bears from their slumber. And now there is no one to look over them. The door is locked. There is no comforting voice. Even as the sun rises in the morning, they remain miserably enclosed. But soon all the fuss comes to an end and their world is at peace again. And a nice early morning shower washes away all the troubles of the night. Open the mouth and rinse. Water games until they are completely drenched and then off to the next adventure. Here they have to put their thinking caps on. Václav wants to see if the bears can understand some technical challenges. He pours some honey into a wooden box and closes it. And here's the test with a sliding panel. The smell is intense for the bears' noses. The male bear comes, smells, and then there's no nonsense. A solution is found in true roughneck style. As the box falls to the ground, the panel breaks off. Make way for my honey. Now, a more difficult test. The box is nailed to the surface this time, and now it's her turn. The more cautious of the two who puts brains before brawn. A clear-cut case, the panel is loose. And you can slide it. Head first into the case. And then, as on every other day, it's off to the wild and the near unspoilt forest, the original domicile of the cubs. It's no wonder that they feel so at home here. And all the time with something new to discover. Even the smallest animals can arouse the deepest curiosity. They seem to give off a special scent. Ants' nests, though, simply cannot be resisted. The bear's claws dig deep into the nest. Even the ant's defensive spray is no deterrent. It will only be when they're older that they'll begin to eat ants' eggs, but for now, there's fun to be had in just digging around. It is a natural instinct that will serve them well in the future. Towards the end of spring, the rains begin. The water comes down in buckets. 
but no reason to stay at home, even if the streams have now grown into strong rivers. And when the forest floor is even too wet for beetles, can tame bears ever get used to the wildness of nature? Václav believes in his adopted offspring and sets them a test. Secretly, he disappears into the undergrowth. Now, they are all on their own. Where is Václav? His scent has been washed away by the rain. Where can he be? Perhaps down at the river. The current is now stronger. One courageous jump and he's on the other side. She tests the water with her paws. A little too strong for her body weight. But now she has found a way and crosses where the river is a little calmer. Not a hint of panic. Finally, they have reached solid ground. Exhausted and drenched, they suckle on their paws. It's a little like thumb sucking. It calms them down and offers comfort. And just at the right moment, really, the trusted voice. They've handled themselves valiantly. But for now, they don't let their Václav disappear from their sight. The forest has changed due to the rain. A lake now spreads out between the trees. The exciting new novelty presents itself at the next outing. Suddenly there's water where they had earlier dug around. For the male cub, that means only one thing. Head first into fun and the water. However, the water is a little deeper than he thought. That is, when he gave a thought at all. And swimming is hard work. He struggles his way back to the bank where he has caused some concern and disquiet. Done it, albeit with great effort. His loving sister gives him a little reprimand. That was no great showpiece for his talents and for now he's had quite enough of water. Václav's cubs are increasingly trying more solid foods. And that has to be within arm's reach. The leaves smell good, but cause diarrhea, so don't go there. Otherwise, there is no danger. Sometimes, Václav is encouraged to have a bite to eat. Beech nuts, for example, are an absolute must or perhaps these young shoots. A practical lesson with recommendations and cautions. This herb Paris is poisonous, even if it does look rather delicious. Much better are the protein-filled larvae and bulbs in the ground. An elder tree, with a little help from a longer reach, leaves and blossoms are brought into arm's length. The outing into the forest was long and exhausting for the bears. Added to that, they had some extra lessons. Suddenly, though, all their worries and tiredness evaporate. For the first time in their lives, they are confronted with goats and sheep. 
separated only by a wire fence. It is an encounter unlike any other. Both parties approach each other. There is a distinct unease. And the fence? Well, that is a nuisance. Is there an instinctive knowledge that these animals will later be part of their diet? Later, when they are big and strong? Bears love water. Václav is curious to see if they will accompany him on his canoe trip. There's room enough for the three of them in the boat, but will they voluntarily climb aboard this dubious, unsteady vessel? They prefer the security of the safe shoreline, but keep the canoe within their sights as if pondering what they should do. The male cub looks on skeptically from above. His sister, on the other hand, has come to a different decision. But how to get on the canoe? Boarding from the deep water is not an option. And now, even Václav is surprised. Clearly, she has got a plan. She swims along the shoreline and then quickly scampers up the embankment. And there, she makes a straight line for the boat to a place where she can safely climb aboard. She did have a plan. Now, thanks to a bit of head and leg work, she is in the boat with Václav. Gliding through the water without all the inconvenience of getting wet. This is new and takes some getting used to. But after a short while is a little boring. After all, there is one missing element. The company of her brother, who has decided to stay with the comfort of solid ground under his feet. The separation is an uneasy feeling. Sibling bears belong to one another. Without another thought, she cautiously gets out of the boat again. The small female cub knows what she wants and has clear priorities. Václav may offer security and is very trustworthy even when he's paddling through the water in his unsteady vessel. But nothing can beat being together with her brother. Nothing is more fun than going with him on adventures of discovery. They are the epitome of industriousness. They have to fly 25 times in and out of the flower to fill one honeycomb cell with floral nectar. Throughout the course of fermentation, honey will be produced. The beekeeper is in charge of this one here. He monitors how much nectar his workers have collected to assess when a honeycomb is full. The cells as yet have no lid. That means that the bees still have to collect more honey supplies. The beekeeper will have to be patient. But patience is not a virtue bestowed upon everyone. A stick left behind stands close to the hive. The honey bees may have swarmed out, but the smell of honey is still very much there. And now the ingenuity of the female cub comes into play. Just like the beekeeper, she tests the cells for the amount of honey. Then she commences with all wheels in motion to get every last bit out of the sweetness. Together, it all tastes that much sweeter.
It's now early summer. Lysena D lick minerals from the ground and dance through the air. The array of colours on the meadow are intended for the insects. They should recognise where there is nectar for free. The colours are a landmark so it can be found again. The colourful world of the flowers escapes the bears. They can't recognise different colours and possibly see only in black and white. Their fine noses are their compensation and that comes into play on the meadow. They are now five months old. Their exploratory territory grows continuously and often Vaclav remains far behind them. Adventure is in the air, the smell of honey is there again too. Even from a great distance, the bears can detect the smell from this nest of bumblebees. Their sense of smell is 1,000 times that of a human and brings them directly to the entrance of the nest. Instinctively, they put their paws in. But then there is a new discovery. Bumblebees can defend themselves and sting. Cherries are now ripe and sweet. Bears also like the taste of them. Vatslav picks the fruit, making it clear that if one wants to get to the fruit, one has to stretch a bit. His message has been understood. The bears go back for more. They've learned that ladders will take them up from their playground and there's even elbow space for both of them. As a raised platform is for the hunter, it is also for a bear at the start of his cherry hunt. As always, the sweetest fruits are to be found at the top of the tree. And as ever, he has to choose one of the most precarious branches for his balancing act. Paws are not hands, and sometimes one has to find another way to help oneself. Little bears in a large cherry tree. The farmer will have to exercise a little tolerance. A delicate encounter, horse and bears. Will it all end in tears? Vaclav gives a warning sound for danger. His cubs react immediately. escaping to where they are most secure and from where they can get a good view of the situation. All clear. The danger has passed. Whatever next? Such enormous animals. But have they really left the scene? Vatslav realises increasingly that although the bears listen to him when he calls, they don't always listen. Even the sound of an electric saw doesn't disturb them. Quite the opposite. They don't notice it at all. They have absolutely no interest in the soaring. The knapsack, on the other hand. Right ahead of them, it stands provocatively and smells extremely promising. 
He cuts up the tree and they share out the bread and the apple. Together they feel strong. The two of them were inseparable, but an unexpected drama unfolds at the hunting lodge. He goes in first, and before his sister can follow him, the door suddenly closes shut. It can neither be opened from outside nor inside. This is very bad luck. They've been separated. It's the worst thing that can happen to the siblings. Even the bear's brute force is of no help here. They have to think of a good idea. Perhaps over the roof. Ladders are often useful to get to where one wants to go, but not always. In the meantime, he's discovered the lean-to window. Although his escape is a bit tight and a bit high up, he gets a little sisterly support from below. And finally, the situation is resolved. The drama at the hunting lodge and its happy end. Vaclav's cubs are now more independent, mischievous and courageous. It's unsurprising, considering their growing strength and experience. But how brave are they? At the edge of the forest, there waits a surprise. Large and grey, and standing in the middle of the path, and manifestly awe-inspiring. The bears have never seen a fully grown wild boar. The statuesque form doesn't move, doesn't smell, but nevertheless, the bears walk a wide circle around him. What is it that sets alarm bells ringing? What is it that actually causes so much fear? Vaclav believes that such a figure causes an instinctive fear in his bears. They have to take caution around wild boars. And when confronted by other strange bears who share a similar form, most certainly. Eventually, Vaclav diffuses the situation and tries to demonstrate how harmless the model is. But the bears are having none of it. Now, Vaclav lays the monster down, so that its outline is unrecognisable. Eventually, the male cub plucks up the courage to take a closer inspection. Increasingly, he begins to lose his earlier timidity. As a matter of fact, the coast is all clear in front of this thing that no longer resembles an animal, as a matter of fact, it must be further examined. And best of all, in private, without the interference of Vatslav. The female cub is still not convinced. Heaven knows what could come next, and she's quite right. Suddenly, there is the beast again, back to its full size. It's every bear to himself. What goes on in the bears' minds? Are they really so clueless? Will they be fooled by every sort of replica? 
simply when they have eyes and a tail and added to that fur. Václav now confronts them with a crudely disguised case that doesn't look quite so awe-inspiring. He calls to his bears and secretly hopes that they're clever enough not to be taken in by such an obvious fake. The male cub doesn't disappoint. Not a trace of fear. This case is and remains a harmless opponent. In fact, it is a fascinating source of exploration. Even she doesn't have any reservations. Václav's bears are neither stupid nor fearful. However, they do possess an instinctive fear as to how their adversaries might look. This is most certainly only a case and nothing more. Václav cannot imagine the forest without its enchanted lakes in his life. Like his bears, he loves to be outside in the nature and sometimes he'll pitch a tent to protect himself against the rain and the mosquitoes. Today's camping trip, however, will be the shortest of his life. The light frame of the tent is the source of great fascination. Václav may be able to save himself, but for his tent, there is no hope. The tarpaulin tears and fills up with air as if it has a life of its own. And what on earth could be underneath this rustling shell? Camping with bears. That didn't quite work out as planned. But for now, Václav knows one more source of fun for his adopted children. And how unbelievably fast they dismantled a tent. Even if it won't fit into a rucksack anymore. Václav cannot hold it against his bears, despite the wreckage. Each to their own, within their love of nature. This has been a long day for all three of them. And why not round it off all together? A little party in the house Chalopek. And to make sure it's really cosy, Václav builds a fire in his fireplace. The bears are not scared of fire. They are used to it from when they lived in the living room too. And here we have the grilled sausages, Václav's speciality. But what's that all about then? The man of the house tucks into the food alone. His guests are none too happy about such ill manners. They make their protests known in their own way and suckle on his arm. Until they have reminded him of his obligations as a host. There we go. What a cosy evening. Green flood plains spread out within the dense forest, exactly the terrain for bears. Disappearing under the long grass, Václav has to give all his concentration not to lose sight of the bears. And when water comes as an extra bonus, the bears are in their element. The bears are in luck with their foster dad, who, just like a good mother bear, is always prepared for a bit of rough and tumble. 
albeit with some restraint, as it is acknowledged that the bears are now very strong. And the claws of the bears cannot be retracted. The next stage, the total contrast program. Here the bark beetle has done all the hard work. The skeletons of trees and branches stretch far and wide. And thus, the dead forest is a guarantee of some lively entertainment. A bit of balancing and climbing with some small delicacies thrown in. Ants attempt to save their eggs, but the bear's tongue is quicker. Delicious servings of protein are hidden all around. Dead tree trunks in particular offer a range of live food. Autumn has arrived. A soft layer of leaves covers the forest's floor and rustles with every step. The bears are now large and heavy. For a long time now they have dealt with their own food foraging and know which things are edible and which are poisonous. The male bear is nearly a year old and now weighs a stately 50 kilos. He sometimes doesn't know his own strength or what to do with it. Such high spirits and muscle power, how much longer can all continue so well? The female is on the search for mushrooms in the meantime. Mushrooms that grow on trees and that calls for a totally new approach. The autumn is a time for berries and Václav knows exactly the right places to find them. The shrubbery is fully laden, but each has to be discovered and then picked, each one individually. To no avail, the bears can't get enough of the fruit and are occupied for the entire day. How will Václav's protégés deal with the winter? Will they retreat and hibernate as the brown bears do in the Carpathian Mountains? And will the wooden hut that Václav built earlier be the right place for them? Secure enough for the animals which in the meantime have grown enormously. Václav always knew that this problem would arise and he's made preparations. A large natural enclosure has been constructed some way off with trees and the possibility to take a swim. But now it will be emotionally very difficult for him. Finally, it's his adopted children that he has to give away. As always, they climb happily onto their trailer. They enjoy being driven about and anyway, when they are together, all is well and good. Even in the wild, bears will eventually separate from their mother, albeit, first of all, when they are two to three years old. Will they be happy in their new enclosure? Václav is confident he has done everything to be sure. Here on the site of Totsnik Castle will be their new home. Days later, Václav goes to visit the bears. They must be down there somewhere. As he visits the enclosure, the siblings are there, escorting him through their new terrain. Lily. They show, as always, no signs of being distraught or undue stress. 
it's a good sign. Václav is relieved and allows himself to be greeted as bears do. But there is no time for long ceremonies. They charge off again to rollick about with each other. They are the perfect company for each other. Václav is for now forgotten. As in the wild, the siblings remain very close, even when the connection to the mother recedes. With the male bear, the breakaway seems to show something. He confidently demonstrates his independence. However, last but not least, Václav receives acknowledgement of their attachment.